Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales of Demystified podcast. Today we're joined by Poovan Sangaran, who's currently a sales operations manager at REA Group in Asia. And Poovan, welcome to the show. Thank you for the invitation, Tom. Great to be here. Um, and so this is interesting. Um, we are we're post a hundred guests now on the show, um, and I. Don't, well, I'm very sure we haven't had a guest from outside of Europe or the US. And so this is going to be interesting to see if there's kind of any differences that we can, uh, in the approach to sales operations that we can see when we move outside of those two areas. So, Poovan, let's kick off and understand how you first got into sales operations. Well, um, I think, uh, so first of all, again, thank you very much for having me. Um, I think uh, like many others, so I did go through some of your videos and like I mentioned, uh, it's great to see you've done plenty of these videos and um, a lot of those, I think, videos tell pretty much a similar story to me. So I'm not sure if this is going to be super interesting. So like many others, it's been an exercise in self-discovery, really, um, and with some elements of luck. Um, So I started off in um, manufacturing. Um, as an engineer optimizing production lines that made uh, electronic devices. And I was always curious about the business aspect of things. You know, when you see people from corporate visiting and they're always discussing about numbers and um, looking very fancy, I always wondered what they were talking about. So um, I didn't have an opportunity to go into the business side of of that company. So I I instead set up my own um, startup that uh, built custom RFID and network solutions for companies in the manufacturing, construction, agriculture, and defense space. And the domain of that startup got acquired, and which meant I had to find something else to do. And so I was kind of curious on what it would be like to work for a really large corporate organization, you know, the ones that have coffee machines in every corner. I never had an opportunity to do that. So I I went back into corporate life. I went into a a telco, telco engineering, where um, this company obviously had a really nice office building. And so I worked on rolling out uh, and maintaining communication networks um, for uh, in in Malaysia. Um, And I gained entry into a management trainee program with an airline. Um, And I worked in the treasury department um, of this airline where I worked on FX risk management and fuel procurement. Um, I was connected by a headhunter um, to a e-commerce company, which eventually became the largest e-commerce player um, in Southeast Asia. So I started off in sales and marketing analytics and subsequently took on the operations strategy role, uh, which was very cost heavily cost focused. Um, it was something that I was beginning to enjoy to do, but I wanted a role that was heavier on top line numbers. I wanted to know uh, or be more focused on driving revenue uh, rather than on heavier on the cost side. So I moved to a strategy role at a seed stage startup, um, which was an online travel aggregator, where I defined the charter and set up the strategy and planning role um, there. Uh, the same headhunter from before uh, connected me to REA, actually. Um, and they were looking to hire the first sales ops person uh, for Asia to set up the function together with the regional team members um, out of the Australian office. And s- uh, since then, I've relocated internally to help uh, deepen the impact of sales operations in areas involving strategy and operations for the Hong Kong business. Um, I'd say the role is... It's been, I think it's a great balance in terms of what I, w- I, I think in, I find interesting, which is engaging people. I, I really like the aspect of being able to influence the outcome from other people and also being driven decisions that are driven by facts and figures, which I think those two things is a, is a nice combination and it suits me nicely. So that's how I ended up here. Yeah. Got it. And so to zoom in on REA. How many people are there in the ops team and how many reps are you supporting? Sure. So just some context to this. Uh, the sales ops team in REA is very focused on sales strategy and sales processes. So therefore, things like sales systems 
um, analytics, those are managed by centralized teams. Therefore, we don't need as much capacity as many other companies uh, from a sales ops standpoint. So essentially, it's just myself and one other sales ops person that runs sales operations functions for across three countries right now. So we've had it. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the recent developments with REA Group in Asia, but we've had a spin-off via a joint venture where two of the five countries in Asia was spun off into a joint venture with essentially one who was a competitor and we've got a separate entity there now. So at its peak, we were managing about 120 sales team members. And after the joint venture, we now have about 60 sales team members. The remaining 60 team members are managed by a separate management, a separate uh, organization completely now. Got it. So two, two op people responsible for 120 reps. So, uh, yes, uh, initially it was 120 um, and now it is um, 60, yes. But uh, as I mentioned, it is very strategy and sales process focused. The dashboarding systems, analytics, we have a team that helps us with that. So it's, it's essentially a, 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 shared net, a, sh- a shared team that we, we, we share resources with multiple other teams. Got it. And, and what are the names? So you're basically pulling in resources, say, from the IT team that would help you configure the dashboard. Got it. Correct. So you would pull out, you, you would, so we would engage with the analytics and data team for dashboarding, for example. Uh, we would work with, so we have a dedicated team for our CRM, for example, to manage and build our CRM system. And they do that across the, the other countries as well. So that would be two, two examples. Cool. Can you share something that you've done at REA that has significantly impacted the productivity of the reps? Significantly impacted the productivity of the reps. Um, I wouldn't say there is any one specific thing because all the different areas, so there are three key areas that impacts productivity of the sales team, um, which is the efficiency of the seller, uh, the effectiveness of the sales team and the motivation of the sales team and principally um, we at the sales ops team is coming from a standpoint of providing strategic and analytical capabilities so we're really approaching it from aspect of helping to maximize the outcome of the seller so just just to provide some context we're not trying to to get the most out of the seller for the sake of us we are trying to get the most out of the seller for the sake of themselves for, so that they get the best outcome, they get paid the most in terms of commissions, etc. So I would say there are a couple of initiatives that has worked well. One, I think re- revisiting how the incentive structure looks like, and uh, I'll try to cover as much as I can without getting too much into the details, but essentially aligning that closer to the strategic outcomes of the organization and ensuring that the different um, commission components are achievable, making targets that are, that the seller believes is achievable because we engage a lot with the sales team before we roll out targets. So I think the, just to share maybe a few, I would say the review of the commission structure to align it closer to strategic outcomes. Secondly, um, target setting, that's set in a way that both aligns to what the company needs and also aligns to what the seller can and believes can be done. So those, I think those two things in, in combination has worked really well, I would say. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. Over the past kind of couple of months, I assume that the sales team has transitioned to more remote work. How's that been from a sales ops standpoint? How are you able to still make these, and going back to your three points that I really liked, efficiency, effectiveness, and motivation, 
How are you impacting those whilst everyone's working remotely? That's a, that's a really interesting question. So honestly, I think we are lucky at REA where I think from a culture standpoint, we, we may have certain advantages. So I think philosophically, I think trust and mutual respect creates the best team dynamic in my view. Um, that's, that's what I believe. And so fundamentally, I think there is a, a big trust factor and in, in our organization that we have brought in the right people and we believe that they are capable. So honestly, I would say um, it, it hasn't been a significant change because we've been able to trust that our sales team members will follow through. I think the only thing that has changed really is the mode of communication really. Uh, but I think in terms of activities, the way we track, the way we communicate, um, engagement levels. In fact, I think the way the, the amount of times that we now spend communicating things to the team has increased because we don't see each other face to face. But um, apart from that, I think it's pretty much business as usual, I would say. Awesome. Um, now, I'd like if you were, could share a high level kind of overview of the forecasting process you guys are currently running. Uh, sure. So, uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go into this with too much detail, but I'd say it's a combination of a bottom up approach, uh, sorry, a bottom up approach and a top down approach, which means we are attempting to balance what the company needs to get to and what the team realistically can get to. And on top of that, we will add in any additional uh, opportunities or any additional initiatives that's going to help close that gap. That, that will be a way of describing what, how we go about it. Does that, does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard of the, the, that scratchy before. Yeah, so that, that I, I, yeah, I think that's, that's what I would say our approach is. It's, we, we definitely need to ensure the company is moving in the right direction. Um, so how can we ensure that based on seller capability, capacity, um, we can get to that. What else do we need in order to land at that number? That's sort of the approach that we take. Cool. And then going back to the, the point you said, you shared just now about trust. Um, and you say that REA could have this kind of advantage in the marketplace. Do you mean that yep. like REA have built this trust within all employees or you specifically have been able to develop trust with the reps? Um, I would say... I think it's a combination of uh, both, I would say. So maybe from a team standpoint, I think being able to build uh, mutual respect and trust, it's something that takes time. It's not something that immediately happens. So I think over a period of time, we've been able to show that we are working in, um, in order to ensure you get the best outcome. And at the same time, we have been able to demonstrate that we are capable. So whatever that we are, um, communicating, it is landing fairly close at what we are communicating. Or, 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 so we basically be able to prove that we are capable. And so that helps from a team trust standpoint. From a organizational standpoint, I think you can look this up. You can look up any uh, videos that where uh, the Asia CEO has spoken. In fact, I think he gave a speech recently maybe a couple of months ago at a digital event where he's the topic of the event. Uh, the topic of his speech was culture eats strategy for breakfast. That was the topic. So that gives you an indication of the thinking behind the leadership in this organization. So it's, it's a combination of both, I would say. So Yeah. It's not just all down to your amazing uh, interpersonal skills with the sales reps. Well, I would like to say it is, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a combination of both. Awesome. Could you, um, well, actually, I'm going to, if you could only measure one sales related metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? You know, I saw you asking this question in some of your other videos. I really don't like this question, but um, I'm going to say um, if there was one, um, so the reason why I don't like it is I think it's, it's insane. There is no way to just measure one specific thing and decide and use that going forward for the rest of time. 
Um, but to me, I think the metric that best defines the health of a business, to me, is the repeat customer spend. How much of the revenue that is being generated by an organization is coming from customers who are existing customers? How long are they spending? How long have they been with us? I think that's a good indicator of business situation. But as, as I mentioned, depending on the objective, it always is more useful to put that side by side with other metrics as well. So, but I think the repeat customer spend is a key indicator of the effect, how, whether the product is working, uh, whether customers like uh, what we have, um, whether we are doing, how are we doing against versus our competitors. It, it's a good indicator for a couple of different areas. I, I totally agree. Uh, and it's a bit more holistic than just having a specific sales metric, right? It's really, as you said, it's a very good gauge of how, how effective you are as a business. Yeah, but again, you, again, if I was to just look at that whole, in, in a silo, I might be missing out on a bigger picture. So I might be retaining all my customers, but hey, I'm not signing up anyone else because the, cust- the competitor is signing up all the new customers and we are missing that. So yes, re- retention is great, but we still need to be able to see that side by side with everything else. Agreed. And then finally, who in the world of sales operations has taught you the most? You know, uh, there is a person um, in the Australian business called Jim Geary. Okay, so he's, he was my sales ops contact uh, when I first joined the organization and he was super supportive um, in providing the initial thinking uh, how to, to set up and basically supported us through the early projects in Asia. So, and he's got some really novel ideas um, in, in some of the work that he has done in sales ops in, in, in the Australian business. Some of that we could not replicate here, but it's just very interesting, the, the, the thinking and, and the approach that he had taken. And he's just a nice guy uh, as well. So I, I would, yeah, so that, that's, I think that's somebody who I would say I would like to catch up for lunch. In fact, I've not got caught up with him for some time. I probably should get in touch with him tomorrow or something like that. Well, Jim, if you're listening, uh, there's, a, there's a lunch here waiting for you. Yeah. Um, hey, Jim. If, yeah, Jim. <laughs> Jim, let's go for lunch. We have to go for lunch, yes. Um, I think it's the first time we've had, a, we've had an open invite for lunch. Is that invite just for Jim or for anyone called Jim that's listening? Sorry, is that an invite for <laughs> anyone? <laughs> yeah, is it an invite for anyone? Um, yeah, why not? Let, yeah, let's go for, it, it'll only be a, like a, a couple of million people. So yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay, um, Poover's LinkedIn profile is linked below this video if you do want to uh, take him up on the lunch offer. Anyway, um, three things that I like. So the first three things, uh, I really like how you break down how you can understand or how you can, uh, the, the levers you can push to improve a salesperson's performance, efficiency, effectiveness, and motivation. It's a very simple way of breaking that down. Um, I, you've said this a couple of times, but the, the whole point about your role as sales ops is to get the best outcome for the salesperson. Totally agree. But then you also said that REA had this trust, right, between you, between the whole business, between you and the sales people. And maybe that trust came from the fact that you are consistently looking out for their best interests. So that was quite interesting. That kind of matched up. And then, yeah, I, it, it makes sense that you, you, you've come here with the, with the metric that's a bit more holistic, where we have some like really focused sales ops, a really intelligent sales ops people that come up with really like complex sales ops metrics, which are great, but are just focused on the sales process. But here you have a holistic business metric, which again makes sense because of your background, like running your own business, right? So that makes sense as well. Um, Poovin, thank you so much for those insights and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Tom. That was really, really interesting. And I look forward to seeing who else you talk to after this? <laughs> <laughs>